Well, uh, Tesla owned Mayor um, on YouTube, who's made a lot of cool circuits that I've built. Um, he sent me a drawing that he did. I think it was just a quick drawing. He wanted to see if it would work because I had so many of these coils. And um, it's pretty much trying to take this Tifatronics driver and translate it into like a dual resonant circuit, which is pretty much a more simplified version of the Scori driver. Now, Scori's drivers, what this circuit is based on, uh, Tifatronics based his off Scori's drivers, and Scori's. I'm, you know, I'm not 100% how those work, but those are supposed to be dual resonant. Basically, the simplified version here, where you've got a, a tighter coupled primary, I don't think it quite works the same. However, you can translate that over to a single turn, uh, pretty much like this, which is sort of, I believe, what Tesla Umir was trying to do. Now... I got him confused with Tifatronics actually because Tifatronics was originally messing with logic levels and he went over to the IRF Z44Ns. Now Tesla Unmare's drawing, he's got the logic levels and double checking, I can see that I guess his idea is how hard can I push the logic levels, um, you know, with maybe 15 volts on the gates max to see uh, if you can just get higher output. Now, as far as I know, the difference between the logic levels and the IRFs over here is not a whole lot other than the gate voltage. Um, these are pretty low on resistance, so I kind of feel like I'd, I'd be better off sticking with these anyway. That way I can more safely push up to uh, 24 volts and higher. So that's pretty much the deal to where I'm taking uh, this original circuit and just seeing how, how that works by uh, running it more or less with this type of primary through a, uh, a series capacitor. Uh, one of these coils like this, you know, a lot of people look at this circuit and it, it reminds them of a ZVS driver. Say you got a ZVS driver like this right here, it's very similar. The only thing is, you know, with the ZVS driver, you've got these, uh, you're charging the gates up, you know, with these resistors. So the whole idea is you want the gates to charge up as fast as possible with, you know, without actually destroying them. So then like with this deal, obviously, you're not actually charging the gates from the positive rail, you're charging them off the secondary current. So this is where all the switching occurs. This is what's causing each transistor to uh, fire and give you a push-pull. This is pretty much critical, this part right here. In that situation, you know, you're going to have pshoom going through this way, then it's going pshoom going through this one, pshoom going through this way, push-pull, push-pull. Taking this for example, you know, this is... It's sort of the same thing, but it's simplifying it down to uh, one primary winding. Same thing, power is going through, so when one fed opens, it's going to come down through this way, hit the primary. When the other fed opens, it's going to come down through this way and hit the primary. So it's, it's like the same deal, but in this case, you've got this uh, resonant capacitor right here across the primary. You know, in the case of the ZVS, this is what determines... The frequency that it's running at. It's got this LC circuit here. This was the first circuit that I made, pretty much identical to that, aside for just a couple things. I wanted to leave that as is. I still need to figure out some how to shield this better, but that works pretty good. This is the guinea pig one I made, and uh, this one actually seems to work a little better. And I've just kind of thrown this board together, so you can see this is just the regular circuit right here. And I'm just coming off that and translating that into this little board here, which goes to the <clears throat> single uh, primary. And you can see, that's that's only 16 volts. Well, let me see. Let's cut it up to uh, 24. Oh. I think it starts. I think it starts arcing to its arcing to the primary when I go higher than about. I got some internal arcing going on that I need to figure out higher than about uh, 20 volts. So I've got a 12 volt regulator. And it's just the way it works. I got to hit about 12 volts or so to get it to go.
probably not a good idea to do that, but it'll survive. So you can see I really, I really put the uh, primary just like kind of right next to it. <laughs> see, it wants to jump out. So that's close to two amps. About an amp and a half. So. <laughs> so what happens if I add about uh, let's just add 50, 50 nanofarads on there? So I'm just going to take this capacitor and put it in parallel with this one. So once I add that, um, you know, the primary is just not, the primary is not juicing it anymore. And added, you know, uh, much more top load on there to see if I can change the resonant frequency of this coil here. Uh, see how that affects the primary coupling uh, based upon this particular capacitor and that particular primary. Same voltage. actually work pretty good with this bigger top load so I'd imagine if I want to add more capacitance there and uh, just get insane with the top load so see what that does by same about 13 volts a little spicy cut it up gate voltage just right see with it with it just right that's what it's that's what it does all the way down it gives me really low duty cycle with it those sparks kind of hurt oh yeah those hurt those are some uh little white bluish very transient sparks that come by but let me bump it up just a little bit
<laughs> Ow. Uh, uh. Oh, just bury it. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's tingly. This ends up sort of running more like the Scory drivers, Scory's original drivers, <clears throat> 12 to 24 volts or so. Except, you know, the difference is. This is just translating over to the uh, single turn. Now, scory circuits, I haven't quite 100% figured those out. And that's why I, I, I like Tevatronic circuits because it was rather simplified. And once I started messing with that, throwing even more basic versions together using higher power MOSFETs, it seemed like a, just a good to go, handy, quick way to drive decent arcs from low voltage. Um, now, this setup. I'm not 100% whether I can call this dual resonant or not, and at the same time with, with the SCORI drivers, from what I can tell, I'm not quite sure how that's dual resonant either, although the output looks like it, but it seems more like there's a, you know, you're, you're really finely tuning the switching, and you're also helping that by forming some type of tank on the switching side. So it just seems like a more efficient uh, way to, to drive push-pull switching with a Tesla coil without any driver ICs. I thought that was pretty cool just, just, just to be able to see, you know, such a wide single turn like that, get, get decent output on this type of circuit is pretty cool.